talk uh, about Orion Vision in this lecture. Um, so, I, I start, so first, I would like to thank Amaya because she prepared like most of the material, um, and also to Xavi. So this is the structure of the presentation. So we're going to start talking about uh, feature learning. So yes, yeah, since we have a video, in a video we have these two modalities, like the images and the, or the frames, and then the, the song associated to them. So we're going to talk about models that uh, they're going to do self-supervised learning. So self by this, I mean that they try to, models that try to solve a task that it's derived from the input data itself. So you don't need to do any manual labeling on, on that. So first, I'm going to talk about a work that used the audio as a signal supervision for training a good visual model. Uh, and this is this work. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to mention a lot of works from Toralba because in the MIT have been doing working a lot on, on this multimodal uh, with audio and, and, and visual. So uh, yeah, in this paper it's called Ambient Zones Provide Supervision for Visual Learning. And it's quite descriptive of what they do. So the idea is that you can, uh, you can train a good visual model by just um, analyzing the audio. Uh, and then they do the, the assumption that the audio um, contains like a, it's going to give you a good, a good insight of what's going, on, uh, what's, going, what's going on in a particular scene. So it's, yeah. Um, for instance, um, yeah. So you can you you, you can process uh, the the audio from from the videos, and you can extract some some representations of the clearam or the or the spectrum, and then you can use this representation to cluster um, uh, to cluster in the audio space, and then uh, each cluster is going to be kind of a representative of what's going on in a particular uh, scene. So you can, since you know when, when the audio, so you can make this pairs. Now this frame is going to be related to this uh, second of, of audio. So you can cluster the, um, and learn uh, the different points in the audio space. And then you can assign uh, the frames of the videos to the different uh, audio clusters. And the idea is that, yeah, so instead of, you want to learn a function that is going to map uh, your images, your image to a, uh, a class that is derived from the from, from the audio, and you are not going to predict uh, any audio signal, but you are gonna so it's gonna be just a, a normal classification task using these different clusters that you derive from your from your audio, and that's what what they do in this paper, and and actually by doing that, um, they so if you remember the visualization lecture from yesterday, you can visualize the neurons of, on, on at different points on the network. And they show that uh, without any supervision, the, the neurons kind of learn to, to fire when they uh, detect some baby faces or, or persons or like some semantic, semantically meaningful uh, visual patterns. Uh, this is done, again, with no supervision, just by taking the audio and doing these clusters and then, yeah, just classify, uh, yeah, uh, among the different clusters. Um, yeah, so what you can do as well is to use the vision uh, as a supervision for learning a good audio model, so the other way around. Um, and in this paper, again from the MIT, uh, they they propose this uh, teacher-student network, where um, so you start off from you from labeled videos, okay, and then you're gonna take some trained uh, visual models, so one model that it's trained on ImageNet, and another model that it's trained on on, on places to detect different yeah, to classify different places. And, and then you're going to take the video, and then you are going to generate the annotation by just yeah, computing the, the class scores uh, from these two visual uh, models. And that's going to be the supervision to train uh, a network for classifying the sound. So you don't have, you, you learn those weights, uh, those weights in the, in the top are fixed. You're going to use the knowledge of the visual models to, to learn your, your sound uh, network. This network is a fully convolutional uh, network that takes a a raw um, audio signal, and it just does the, the, the one by one convolutions, and, and then the slide the convolution uh, along the temporal dimensions. Um, yeah, and by, by doing so, um, then you they obtain this nice. Uh, 
So this is the, the, the class predictions, uh, just analyzing the audio, not taking the, the visual information at all. Uh, so birthday party. And again, so this is like in inference, uh, the classes that you get for this song without taking into account the, the video. Uh, so the, the image, sorry. Uh, and actually they also shown that they learned like, very strong uh, audio features because they, so once the network for the audio is trained, then they use the features and then they stack on top uh, a classifier to, 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 to learn the classes of different benchmarks. Uh, so they don't fine tune the, the network at all, they, they just train a, a linear classifier on top and then show that they get the, the state of the art performance uh, at, so two years ago, but they get the state of the art performance in these two classific audio classification benchmarks. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, and you can, so you can again visualize in this case you cannot really visualize because it's audio, but you can listen to what the neuro, uh, so when a neuron fires in this model, so you can listen when, what kind of sounds likes the neuron to, to see the most. And for instance, this is some examples in the convolutional layer seven. Um, yeah, so a neuron uh, fires when it detects deep, like different sounds. Different sounds are different neurons. Okay, you, you got an idea. Uh, and then you can go on and then uh, listen to the neurons at any, any layer. Okay, so, uh, so instead of going from one modality to supervise the other, you can do both things at the same time. This is actually really cool. And this is a, a paper on ICCV to 2017, when they proposed, I think uh, Victor mentioned that yesterday. So now you have, um, you have your videos and you have no labels, but you can exploit the, um, yeah, so the, the, the gradients between both signals to train this, this structure. So one channel is going to process your frames, your visual information, the other channel is going to process the audio. In this case, they follow a VGG-like architecture and then the video, they, so they take as a positive pair um, a frame and one second uh, related to that, that frame. So any frame that is not within that second of audio is going to be a negative pair. Um, yeah. And for the audio, they don't use the raw signal, they use the spectrogram, so they can apply uh, this normal VGG, so they process that as, a, as is, if it were an image. And then they forward everything to the top, and then they uh, concatenate, and basically they stack a, a, a classifier that is gonna tell, okay, this is a match, or this, this, the, the visual information and the audio match, or it doesn't. And by doing so, uh, yeah, and this is like the details, they, they use a very large data set, by the way, for training this thing, uh, so they use kind of a, a lot of resources because they train it from scratch, and I think they mentioned they train, like, up to, they use like a 60 million of examples like this, and then 16 GPUs and like a, a lot of mm, yeah, things because they have many data. Uh, but well, uh, if you do that and train from scratch, then, and if you look at the neurons again, yeah, if you take attention at the visual part, then you see that naturally some of the neurons uh, learn to react to, to kind of semantic things, so things that make sense, no? like uh, this one reacts whenever it sees uh, characters, uh, this one uh, when it detects crowd in the image, uh, this one uh, origin, uh, origins, and so on. So, and this is again learned with not explicitly annotation, which is like yeah, quite cool. Um, and then again, they show that the features that they learn here they are quite robust to solve like a vision task. Um, so again, they, they take uh, they freeze everything. They took the last layer as a representation, and they train a classifier on top. In this case, they they evaluated uh, the, the representations on ImageNet, and they shown that they are like very like not the state of the art, but very competitive to other self-supervised uh, methods. Um, uh, you can do, yeah, and the same thing stands for the audio part. So naturally, uh, some of the neurons uh, on the left you see the spectrogram uh, of the audio, on the right, um, so how the, a neuron in a particular layer reacts. And then naturally, they, so this is like a finger print, so when, uh, when you play the guitar, the finger print thing, so it detects like the, the difference, like the, the difference in time 
when you play a guitar. Or for example, the, for the bass guitar, one neuron is focused to, to detect the low frequencies. Um, and again, they show the, the features are really strong and they can be used. And it's if actually state of the art, uh, like even better than the sonnet, the network that I introduced before, um, for some classification tasks. Um, OK, so that's uh, feature learning. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about, about cross-model retrieval. Uh, Xavi already mentioned something, so this is like the pipeline of content-based image retrieval. So, but what about if you want to retrieve based on the sound? Uh, yeah, why, yeah why, why not? not? Why if you want to retrieve based on the sound uh, all the images that are like, similar to the sound? Um, and this is paper uh, that was done here in UPC. Um, they use a subset of YouTube A Million data sets. So this is a very large and an automatically annotated data set. Uh, they uh, built a subset of that. And then basically, they, they learn an embedding. So they use a retrain features uh, for a network for, for representing the image content, and the same for the audio. Uh, and then they, they learn an embedding where they force the representation to be very similar, uh, as well as, as being a representation that are good to classify the final task. Um, and it's kind of, so yeah, so the loss has two terms. One that makes uh, your features kind of be, if, if they're from the same video, so it's, if it's a match, to be close together, but also they use the, as a regularizer the classification because they don't want to lose. So they want the features to, to be similar, but they want to be useful for solving the class, which is like video classification. Uh, and this is like uh, the laws that they propose. Uh, and by doing this, then you learn on a space. Um, yeah. OK. OK. Great. Before going to that, so you can learn a space when you can retrieve. So, given a modality, uh, in in this case, a, a video, you can find the best uh, song match for that. Okay, this is the this audio example, and then the other way around. No, so you can you can do both. So the song that now doesn't sound. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, you you get the idea. Okay, it's it's not the real song, but something that matches it very well. Then another work uh, also works with a subset of YouTube A Million um, with the application of, okay, let's be more, more, more concise, no? And, and they use, uh, so the purpose of that is giving a, um, a music to find like nice pictures associated to, the, to, to that music. And for that, they uh, download all the YouTube A Million uh, videos that has as a tag um, music. So YouTube A Million is, is multi label so it can be music and then jazz music and then mm, uh, Paris or whatever. No? They build this data set and then they, they again, they follow this uh, kind of um, uh, semi structure. Um, they use some pre-trained features for representing the, the, the content of the frames uh, and then they extract some, also some statistics to represent the, the audio. And then they propose a, a, an unsupervised ranking loss that takes into account. So it's going to try to, again, so minimize the distance between the Mm, audio and visual embedding, but at the same time, uh, it's going to try to preserve. So if um, if two videos, the they, the original features, they were uh, two videos were visually similar. After the embedding, they're going to force the the learned embeddings to be like the, to behave the same, and also for the for the sound. This is kind of a, a, again a regularizer because you want the features to to also be useful for for solving, like, not just to be similar. And then another, another work that, that also targets the cross-model retrieval is an extension of the, of the, of the work that I presented before. And, and then, so this is the, the network that we have discussed. They just propose a, a slight modification on the network. So instead of um, concatenating the descriptors from the visual and audio channels, they, they compare them, so they, yeah, they compare them in the Euclidean space. And then, uh, they take the Euclidean distance, and again, on top of that, they, they place a classifier to say if this is a match or this, if it's not a match. And by doing so, they, they learn this embedding, um, and so they can compare uh, both modalities. And this is an example of why they do. Uh, and yeah, the interesting thing is that they compare, like, they compare the performance of image to image, image to audio, audio to image, and, and so on. And they found that like, by, by learning the network in, in, their work, in, in their way, um, 
they kind of like achieve same, same performance, it's slightly outperform VGG16 that was trained using uh, the original ImageNet labels, which is like, it's, it's cool because it, this is unsupervised. Um, okay, so we want to talk now about, about sound, source, sound source localization. So another modification on this paper, they did many cool things here. So it's, um, uh, you can apply like a, okay, so you have the, the stream for the visual and then the stream from the audio. And, and then you're gonna get here like a volume, a convolutional volume, and from here you, you're gonna get a, an embedding from the same dimensions. So what they do here is to compare um, this uh, embedding with the, with the volume, and then they can like uh, build a, a map, a 2D map, uh, telling how similar is the audio to uh, the different visual locations. And then on top of that, they stack a convolutional layer with a sigmoid, and they can learn uh, those kind of maps. Why are they useful? Because basically they are gonna show you which is the region, uh, which is the sound, the region that generates a particular sound and create this kind of uh, outputs. This is an extension of uh, the same idea as, as previously displayed, but uh, with some, like, some modifications. So instead of just training with pairs of, of images, they, they train with triplets. Uh, the anchor is the particular frame, and then a positive pair is, uh, is going to be a, an audio related to the frame, and a negative frame is going to be an audio from a different, a different uh, video. But then the idea is the same. So they basically learn a, an attention mechanism that is going to tell you uh, where, uh, the, so the, the, where the sound is, is generated. And in this paper, they, they also propose to annotate some of, the, some, of, some of the attention maps, because if you do that completely unsupervised, you can get like, some mistakes that are kind of reasonable. But for instance, if, if you don't annotate uh, some of the examples, um, the network can think that the sound of the car is due to the, to the motorway, not to the car. Uh, which is like, reasonable because, yeah, when you, so the cars are in the motorway, no? and it's like, yeah. So you might think that it's, this is like, the, the reason of the sound, but it's not. So if you annotate, then you can get like, a more accurate so, uh, source of sound. And uh, this is like the structure, again, like it's, it's kind of the same idea of the other one, but they process the, the raw signal uh, with a convolutional uh, layer for the sound. And then they basically learn this attention map uh, by again comparing the embedding of the audio with all the convolutional features of the frame. And then they use the attention map to, to weight um, the local descriptors on the convolutional features. And then again, so they, they learn the network with the, the triplet. Loss. This is the kind of results that you get. So, yeah, it, it's. I think it's quite impressive again because you you never give to the network any any semantic level, no, and it learns to yeah, detect babies and, and dogs and, and everything. No? And this is like a that, uh, demonstration. So in real time, you. I don't know why this one. Okay. So giving the sound. Uh, we're able to know where, uh, what's, what's the reason of that, that sound. Or like this, or actually, you know, or something like this. Okay, and the last thing that I wanna talk, uh, it's about sonorization. So this task is about, okay, you have a video with no sound, you want to put sound on it. So you want to learn a model that is going to generate uh, the suitable sound for a particular set of uh, yeah, sequence of frames. And uh, in this work, um, they basically okay, they basically uh, create a data set uh, which looks like like this. Uh, so they go with a stick and then start to to hit different kind of surfaces, no? and they collect uh, yeah these videos that tells you how a particular material is, go is going to sound. And, yeah, and, and what they do is, uh, okay, so they train uh, a, a CNN for representing the, the frames. Actually, they, they use like, two streams. One is it's just a, yeah, an, an RGB channel, and then the other one is going to be an RG uh, so three channels with uh, three consecutive uh, grayscale frames. But, well, so the idea is that they use a CNN to represent the visual information, and then on top of that, they use uh, two layers of LSTM that are, they're gonna generate um, the, the spectrogram representation. And then from the spectrogram, you can synthesize the, the sound. 
actually they they use that so they don't synthesize from the spectrogram but they um, they they propose this at more like a, a cross model retrieval so they they assign to to the to the video shot the best uh, matching sound that they have in their data set and by doing so then okay on the left before starting on the left you're gonna see the video which is the target and then on the right the actual video that puts the song on it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If you don't see that, it kind of like, it's more or less convincing. And then also, uh, the features that the visual model learn, they're very good to predict the material of the, of the thing, so they, they also did an experiment placing a, on top of the learned features a classifier to classify among different um, materials, and they show that, uh, yeah, so features are really good for that. And then on, on yeah, this other work I, I won't describe in, in detail. They use, so it's the same idea, but they use like a better model to represent the, the video frames, and then a better model to, to synthesize the, the sound, and I think it's very cool. What they achieve, it's like very convincing. Uh, okay, so they show you two videos uh, with the sound and then they ask you to, to guess which is the real one or, or the fake one. Um, okay, you didn't see the, so in this one. There are some videos that are better than the others, but... Okay, you can have a look later. So, yeah. That's it. So, thank you.